let's start off with uh, our uh, fourth session on module 5 analog circuits good afternoon uh the outcomes of today's class would be to analyze and design the circuit of a half wave uh, precision rectifier to understand the working of half wave and full wave precision rectifier and uh, if time permits we'll move on to understand the basics of active filters and in that let's study the working of uh, low pass filter first let's study the behavior of the four types of filters their uh, frequency response characteristics and then let's move on to low pass so next topic that is precision rectifiers the questions asked can be something like this explain with a neat circuit diagram the working of a small signal half wave precision rectifier using an op amp and uh, as i was telling you in the first class in our first class on uh, rectifiers what is the problem with an ordinary rectifier an ordinary diode rectifier though it rectifies the input sine wave to a half sinusoid it's going to convert it but whatever peak voltage i have for the input coming to a regular rectifier a diode based rectifier half wave rectifier we always have this diode conducting only when the input signal v in here should cross the cut in voltage of the diode which will be around 0.7 volts only when the input voltage exceeds 0.7 volts then you can rectify or the diode will start conducting and the output voltage the output half wave voltage will always be less than the input peak voltage by a value of 0.7 volts because the drop across the diode should get subtracted as you can see so if i have input signals whose amplitude is much much lesser than 0.7 volts say i have input signals in the millivolts range i want to rectify 10 millivolts signal or 100 millivolts signal then it's not possible for me to work with an ordinary diode rectifier but i will replace this diode with something known as a precision diode if i replace the ordinary diode with a precision diode then i can work with input signal levels which are in millivolts say i'll have peak to peak 100 millivolts signal i can rectify even this signal okay which is in millivolts if i make use of an input signal which is less than 0.7 volts also so hence we need to use a precision rectifier or a precision diode based rectifier and how do i design this precision diode i have to make use of an op amp and connect the diode within the feedback loop of the op amp so if you connect a diode in the feedback loop of the op amp you will be able to make it work with much higher precision or when i say higher precision i'll be able to overcome this cut in voltage of 0.7 volts which is needed by an ordinary diode so when an ordinary diode is used we needed a cut in voltage of 0.7 volts and we needed the input to be more than 0.7 volts right but when we are using this diode within the feedback loop of the op amp what do you think will happen you see in this circuit the diode is connected inside the feedback loop of an op amp so this cut in voltage v gamma for this conducting diode will get divided by the open loop gain of the op amp so v gamma gets divided by the open loop gain of the op amp and that is the new value of cut in voltage of this diode hence this circuit 
this whole circuit where i'll connect a diode within the feedback loop of an op amp is called as a precision diode this is a precision diode and the simple reason why it is called a precision diode is because it will have a very very low cut in voltage that 0.7 volts drop which was needed for an ordinary uh, diode rectifier to conduct is not needed here so here even if i give an input signal as small as 10 or 100 millivolts i can even rectify that signal you see here we have given an input signal uh, between minus 100 millivolts and plus 100 millivolts we are able to rectify even this signal in this case okay hence this is the behavior of a precision rectifier or a precision diode circuit okay if i have to convert this normal diode to a precision diode i will just include this diode in the feedback loop of the op amp see i am going to connect an input signal here and i am going to connect this diode within the feedback loop of the op amp and i'll measure the output here what happens when we do that so whenever we include the diode in the feedback loop of an op amp it will its um, cut in voltage the cut in voltage v gamma which is 0.6 or 0.7 volts which we had for a diode it will reduce by the open loop gain of the op amp remember the open loop gain of the op amp is in the range of 10 to the power of 5 therefore this cut in voltage 0.6 or 0.7 gets divided by the open loop gain of the op amp and any input voltage when it is greater than this voltage level so the input voltage which is given here if it is just greater than 0.6 by 10 to the power of 5 then this diode will start conducting we don't need uh, the diode drop to be exceeded by the input signal the input signal should exceed the diode drop divided by the open loop gain which is this will be in micro volt so when the input signal is few micro volts also this diode will start conducting provided positive input is given to the non inverting terminal so ideally this whole setup as i was telling you this complete setup behaves like a precision diode so we spoke of a precision diode a precision diode is something similar to an ideal diode so the whole setup here works like an ideal diode or a precision diode the word precision there means high accuracy i am able to rectify very low input voltages which are in micro volt range if you are able to do that you call it as a precision diode so let's see how this precision diode can be used to help design the circuit to work like a half wave rectifier and we also call it as small signal half wave rectifier so when i say small signal remember the voltage levels are the voltage levels are usually less than what plus or minus 10% of the q point levels so we have the q point voltage say vce q or ic q voltage levels we are talking are less than plus or minus 10 volts a uh, 10% of the q point voltage level which we will fix then we call it as small signal and remember here when i say small signal we are normally working in milli volts or micro volts range so we are working with input signals which are in few milli or micro volts okay so as i was telling you conventional rectifiers can rectify ac voltage whose amplitude is more than the cut in voltage of the diode whereas by using a precision rectifier it's possible for us to rectify very small ac voltages so let's see it's the same circuit what i drew there 
this is the circuit of a precision diode an op amp and a diode in present in the feedback loop of this op amp so the input signal is given to the non inverting terminal of the op amp and this diode negative or cathode of the diode is connected to the inverting terminal to complete the negative feedback loop okay so let's try to analyze the working how does this work we have given input voltages v in of around 100 millivolts let me say peak uh, one peak so 200 millivolts peak to peak or 100 millivolts peak you can see here in the waveform so what happens now when v in is in its positive half cycle whenever v in is going towards its positive half cycle it is increasing like this as soon as it exceeds zero so as soon as v in exceeds zero and becomes positive what will happen this op amp will uh, be in open loop condition initially because this diode will not be conducting so when it's in open loop whatever small voltage positive voltage which we have that will get magnified by a factor of 10 to the power of 5 which represents the open loop gain of the op amp okay so whatever input voltage we give here maybe few uh, millivolts of input voltage will get amplified by a factor 10 to the power of 5 so i am going to have a large positive voltage at this point let me call this as voa voa becomes a uh, positive and it is a large value okay it tries to be a large value a high positive voltage why this happens because initially d is off initially the diode is off so as soon as the input starts increasing and this becomes positive now we know this negative cathode is connected to the negative terminal so naturally diode switches on now diode switches on once the diode is on it will form a closed loop connecting to the feedback loop connecting to this inverting terminal so what does this circuit look like now see this circuit looks like what circuit is this it's a closed loop and i am measuring the output voltage here v not and the input is given here what does it resemble this is the circuit of a voltage follower so this is the circuit of a voltage follower now when this diode is in conducting mode this acts like a closed switch the diode acts like a closed switch and the circuit looks like that of a voltage follower allowing the output voltage to follow the input voltage so whatever input voltage we have given here you can see the output voltage will follow the input voltage and you can observe clearly if the input voltage has a peak value of 100 millivolts the output will also have a peak value of 100 it won't be less for the simple reason that as soon as the input has started going above zero this circuit has the diode conducting and the feedback loop is closed and the circuit works like a voltage follower so the output voltage will simply start following the input voltage during positive half cycle of the what input signal during the positive half cycle of the input signal the circuit diode switches on circuit acts as voltage follower therefore output voltage will follow v in in the positive half cycle okay and coming to negative half cycle what happens uh, during negative half, half cycle in the negative half cycle of input you can see in this waveform 
so as soon as this input voltage starts going negative here so the input voltage has started becoming negative v in so here v in becomes less than zero what do you think will happen in the circuit as soon as v in becomes less than zero you have a voltage which is negative at the non inverting terminal so naturally it gets amplified by a factor of the open loop gain 10 power 5 you'll have something uh, closer to minus v sat here whenever this op, op amp is in open loop mode and remember initially as long as this diode is not conducting the op amp will be in open loop mode this output of the op amp will move towards minus v sat here output move towards positive saturation plus v sat when we give a positive input signal but whenever i give a negative input signal you see the output will move towards negative saturation so when v in becomes less than 0 initially when d is not conducting so whenever this diode is not conducting what happens the output of the op amp move towards negative saturation remember comparators we have studied in uh, module 4 which tells us the output voltages which are possible in an open loop op amp are either positive saturation or negative saturation we have discussed that so here the op amp output will move towards negative saturation now what will happen to this diode then remember there is a diode here with a negative large negative voltage at its anode and the cathode is connected here so this cathode voltage will almost be same as this input voltage okay we remember the principle of virtual short so what you can surely see is this diode will now be reverse biased i have a higher voltage at the anode and a lesser voltage at the cathode so diode becomes reverse biased or it will not conduct it will switch off the diode will be switched off in this circuit now what happens when the diode is switched off how will the circuit look the circuit looks you have an open circuit here because the diode is off remember a diode that is switched off will not allow any current to pass through it so this will be open so what will be the final output voltage across the load diode is off means the output voltage across the load will be zero i don't have any current only when this is a closed loop it behaves like a voltage follower and the output voltage will follow the input voltage as we saw right but here since the diode is switched off the output voltage will be zero v not turns out to be zero and you have observed the same thing in the waveform during negative half of the input the output tends to remain zero during positive half half output follows the input and during negative half of the input cycle when the diode is off the output remains zero is this clear so we have this circuit where a diode is connected in the feedback loop of the op amp working like a precision diode where for very low input uh, voltage levels also the output will be obtained and i can easily get a rectified output which will clearly follow the input signal i don't have any difference in the amplitudes of the input and the output both are equal because this circuit will uh, divide the cut in voltage of the diode by the open loop gain so we see the cut in voltage v gamma gets divided by the open loop gain of the op amp which is very large hence it can rectify signals which are in micro volts also okay so easily in millivolts i hope all of you understood the working of 
a half wave precision rectifier now if i try to draw the transfer characteristics for this what do you mean by transfer characteristics transfer characteristic is a plot of what output versus input so transfer characteristics will be a plot of output versus out input let me write the generalized equation for output the generalized equation for v not will be something like this v not will be equal to vi for v in greater than 0 and it will be equal to 0 for v in less than 0 right this is nothing but positive half cycle of the input signal this is negative half cycle of the input so i can write a standard equation in this form for the behavior of the half wave precision rectifier which we have considered now if i try to plot the output versus input what would you get v in versus v not this is directly following from the waveform when input is in its positive half cycle output follows it it will be equal when input is in negative half cycle output is zero so positive half cycle means as input is increasing output will also increase when input is zero output is zero when it is 1 volt or 1 millivolt it will this will also be 1 milli if it is 10 millivolts it will be 10 milli if it is 100 so what do you observe you will get a straight line like this in the first quadrant with slope 1 output follows input therefore slope of this line is 1 this is called the transfer characteristics for uh, the output input relation in the half wave precision rectifier which we have considered and we should also continue this for negative inputs so for positive input we know output follows the input what will happen when the input is negative negative input means i have to move in this direction output remains zero so for negative input values v not remains zero whenever v in is negative we saw for v in less than 0 output remains 0 for v in greater than 0 output follows the input so you will see transfer characteristics looking something like this is that clear so this is about the half wave precision rectifier and its transfer characteristics what do you think uh, will happen uh, if i reverse the diode anybody if i reverse the direction of the diode here what will happen very simple um it would work for the negative half cycle exactly it would work for negative half cycle of the input so if you just reverse the diode there you will see that this diode will start conducting when the input goes negative because a negative value at the input side will make the op amp output go towards negative saturation and this diode will be switched on during negative half cycle so what you will see will happen is these negative half cycles will get converted to positive half cycles and during positive half cycles this diode will be off so i'll have zero output during positive half cycles and i'll have positive output during negative half cycles of the input so this is the situation when diode is reversed okay and the transfer characteristics also if you see you will get it in which quadrant you will get the transfer characteristic in the second quadrant negative input minus v in positive output for positive input output is zero so you will see the transfer characteristics will look like this if you just reverse the diode so remember this uh, it's very easy to understand the behavior of these precision rectifiers now usually there is one small problem when i make use of a single diode in the feedback loop 
uh, do you know what that problem is <coughs> as i told you whenever this diode is not conducting the output of the op amp will be in one of the saturation levels and it becomes very difficult or a larger time is needed for the output to shift from so this voa what happens what happens to voa at some point voa will be at a positive saturation when it is at positive saturation the diode conducts what is the drop across a conducting diode it is 0.6 or 0.7 volts right so whenever the diode conducts the output of the op amp will be at 0.6 volts the drop across this plus 0.6 but whenever it is not conducting so positive half cycle it will be like this for negative half cycle of vi what happens the output of the op amp goes to minus v sat when it goes to minus v sat that's when this diode stops conducting or it becomes an open circuit so what is happening at this output voa voa has to change from plus 0.6 to minus v sat and back from minus v sat to plus 0.6 for every half cycle of the input so whenever the input goes to positive half cycle the output of the op amp which was at minus v sat will have to shift to plus 0.6 volts or uh, a positive value and whenever it is going from positive to negative half cycle it should change the drop would change from 0.6 to minus v sat so since it involves a huge change in the voltage level the time taken for that change will also be higher so the time taken for output of the op amp to change from a saturation level to the other level of 0.6 or something will take much larger than if the change had to be between smaller voltage levels for that what we will normally do when we design a practical circuit is i will include another ad additional diode so practical precision half wave rectifier will make use of another additional diode which you can see here this is the additional diode which is connected in the feedback loop so what is the purpose of this diode what is the use of this diode the output of the op amp which i said voa will be at what voa will be at plus 0.6 volts when d2 is conducting so whenever this diode d2 which is there in the feedback loop whenever this is on the output will be at what what is the drop across the conducting diode plus 0.6 volts so output will remain at plus 0.6 volts whenever d2 is conducting but whenever d2 is off what happens when this is off you see this diode is connected in the other polarity in the sense negative of the diode d1 is connected to the output of the op amp where positive of d2 was connected so naturally you can guess if d2 is off d1 will surely be on d1 turns on okay so whenever diode d2 will be off when will this happen when voa tends to go towards minus v sat and when will voa go towards minus v sat whenever the input was input was given here in this case we have changed the position input is also given to the inverting terminal so you will see it is a little more interesting how the waveform will change okay so for now i will talk in terms of just voa the whenever the output is at minus v sat diode d2 is off and d1 is on so whenever d1 is on what will happen as soon as this diode turns on the drop across this diode will be 0.6 
and the output of the op amp voa is connected to the negative end of 0.6 so voa will be minus 0.6 volts so can you see the beauty of this when the output when voa uh, was positive the output tended towards positive saturation and d2 was conducting and whenever d2 was conducting d1 will be switched off okay so whenever d2 was conducting if d2 is conducting d1 is surely off both the diodes are connected in opposite polarities whereas positive of d2 is connected to the output of the op amp negative of d1 is connected to the output so when d2 is on d1 is off then the voltage across this conducting diode which is 0.6 volts plus 0.6 output will reach that value voa tends to be plus 0.6 volts but whenever this d2 is off and d1 is on you see that the output of the op amp will be at minus 0.6 volts so what will happen at any point of time at any point of time the output tends to uh, switch between so if i try to plot voa you will observe yeah i am repeating voa if you are going to observe it will change between just minus 0.6 to plus 0.6 Minus 0.6 to plus 0.6. This will be the output of the op amp. Whereas previously, how would the output change? In the previous circuit, the output of the op amp, if I try to plot VOA, this would remain at plus 0.6 volts here, and here it would reach minus Vsat. Okay. and again when it comes to the positive half cycle the output will retain the voltage value plus 0.6 in the negative half cycle it will so there is a huge change happening in the output of the op amp in the previous circuit and that large change causes a timing delay remember though we expect the output to follow input very quickly that doesn't happen there is always some uh, fixed slew rate i told slew rate is the reason for output becoming slower than the input so every op amp has or needs a sufficient amount of time to make the output change by a large value if the output has to change by a smaller value then it would be faster here the output should change between minus 0.6 to plus 0.6 that is because of the use of a second diode whereas in the first case it had to change between plus 0.6 to minus vsat okay so just repeating this quickly what happens in a practical precision half wave rectifier we are going to include one additional diode and here we have also shifted the input signal to the inverting terminal so let's try to analyze the working of this circuit you will understand how it works so working of this circuit when the input is positive input is in its positive half cycle what would the output tend to be see i have a positive input given to the inverting terminal so initially you always consider op amp will be in open loop so what will happen to voa voa will try to move towards minus v sat yes or no whenever i give a positive value at the inverting terminal remember inverting configuration of op amp will invert the output positive at the input i should get negative at the output negative means it will be moving towards minus v sat but as soon as this value here as soon as as soon as voa crosses minus 0.6 volts so when the voltage here becomes greater than minus 0.6 diode d1 starts conducting now see here 
you can see d1 is connected with the negative at the output so when the negative voltage here exceeds minus 0.6 d1 will start conducting because it has sufficient voltage and since there is a negative voltage at the anode of d2 d2 is off clear so initially when i give a positive value at the inverting terminal as v in so whenever vi is greater than 0 output will move towards negative saturation but it won't go till saturation as soon as the output voltage crosses minus 0.6 volts this diode will conduct it to become a short circuit and this diode will be an open circuit so can you tell me what will happen to the output voltage now this is shorted this is open so will i have any current in this output circuit since there is an open circuit here no connection here means the output voltage will be zero please understand that the output voltage always depends on this diode d2 okay this diode d1 is only for the reason of avoiding delays of output reaching negative saturation uh, or positive when the diode was in or avoiding delays due to output reaching saturation but the diode d2 being on decides whether output should be there and when it is off there is no output so once there is an open circuit in the feedback loop output will be zero please understand that so you can observe the waveform here during positive half cycle of the input you see the output is zero and during this time d1 diode is on and d2 is off okay so here v not becomes zero that's what we have shown next so this is case 1 what happens in case 2 when vi is becoming negative so what happens when vi becomes negative whenever the input voltage becomes less than 0 in this circuit so i have a negative voltage here i should get an output which moves towards positive value because of inverting since the input is given to the inverting terminal the output voltage tends towards plus v sat for negative input voltage so what happens then voa will try to move remember this is only try to move towards plus v sat here also just tries towards minus v sat but it will stop at minus 0.6 here as soon as this becomes more positive than plus 0.6 volts which is the cut in voltage of this diode d2 will start conducting now so as soon as as soon as voa exceeds plus 0.6 volts d2 is on and remember whenever d2 is on naturally d1 will be off because d1 is connected with cathode to this output so d2 is on and d1 is off now how would the equivalent circuit look like the equivalent circuit if you observe will look something like this um, let me draw it here it will look like i have an uh, input signal here you observe you have the input signal given through a 10k resistor okay i hope you are able to see here input given through a 10k resistor and i have another 10k resistor here and i have this diode d2 on d2 is on which is connected to the output of the op amp and the other diode d1 is off so there is an open circuit here and closed circuit here and if you have any load resistance here you can easily say what would the output be yes this is an inverting what 
Inverting amplifier. What is the output of the inverting amplifier? The output of the inverting amplifier is minus RF by R into VI. What is the value of minus RF in this circuit? Minus RF is also 10K. R1 is also 10K. So minus RF by R1 into VI. Both are 10K. So minus 10K by 10K into VI is also a negative value. So what will I get? I'm going to get the output as following the input, but with a positive sign. You had given negative input in this half cycle, but for a negative input, I'm going to get a positive output here. And I hope you understood the reason for that. You see, the circuit of the op amp resembles that of an inverting amplifier. And in an inverting amplifier, we know the output is negation of the input with gain minus RF by R1. I'm not giving any gain in this circuit. I have used equal resistors. So the output will follow the input, but with a negative sign. You see, when the input is negative, the output becomes positive in this half cycle. And in this half cycle, you should remember diode D2 is on and D1 is off. Is this clear? This is about the working of a practical. Can somebody draw the transfer characteristics for this behavior? Your output behavior changes according to where you have connected the input. Here, input is connected to the inverting terminal of the op amp you always have an inverted behavior. That is, I'm going to get the negative half rectified to positive half cycles at the output. What if I wanted uh, the reverse? Positive half cycles becoming negative half cycles and rectified. What should you do? Yes. Same as before. If you want the positive half cycles to become rectified to negative half cycles, you just have to reverse both the diodes. You reverse the direction of both the diodes, your uh, positive half cycles will become negative half cycles. Okay. And let's draw the transfer characteristics here. I want you to understand how the transfer characteristics looks. Okay, this is V0 versus VI. This is negative VI and this is positive uh, VI and uh, this is positive V0 and this is negative V0. So you can observe what is happening initially in for VI. When VI is going positive, the output remains zero. So if I try to plot the output voltage, say for positive half cycle, it should remain zero. It will be on this axis, correct? Whenever the input is positive, the output is zero. You can observe. You can draw the, write the equation also like how we wrote in the previous case. And when the input is negative, that means on this axis, what is happening to the output? Output is becoming positive. So it will be something like this. You see, whenever the input is negative, the output is becoming positive. Hence, I'm going to get this transfer characteristics to look something like this. Whereas if I interchange the diodes, what would happen? You can easily guess. If you have this diode in this direction and this diode also in the opposite direction and as usual you have a 10k resistor here a 10k here and the input signal given here the non-inverting terminal can be grounded through a compensation resistor right 
you can have a load resistor here what happens in this case you will see for when i told you you will get an output only when this diode is on d2 when do you think d2 will be on when i get a negative voltage here it's very simple to analyze you need not worry much you will have the output voltage present only when d2 is on you have to analyze what is the condition for d2 to be on if d2 has to be on i should get a negative voltage here a high negative voltage or this voa should tend towards minus vsat when will this become negative when you give a positive input so whenever you give a positive input output will move towards negative because the input is given to the inverting terminal yes or no so since you are giving the input to the inverting terminal the output tends to become minus vsat but as soon as the output voltage here exceeds minus 0.6 volts we have 0.6 voltage drop across this diode so as soon as that voltage is exceeded this diode is conducting and output will follow the input but with a negative sign output will now be equal to minus of vi i have given a positive vi but i am going to get a negative output and that is during positive half cycle so if i try to draw this waveform here for this condition whenever the input is positive the output will be negative and it is present okay it will i can't draw it to the same scale but imagine it will be same when diodes are reversed when diodes are reversed okay and what happens next so when this diode is on this will be off for the next condition when i give a negative input when input becomes less than 0 i have a negative input this becomes positive it moves towards plus vsat which means this diode will be off this diode will be on open loop here means the output becomes zero so what you can see here is the output will be zero for negative input but it will be a negative value equal to the input in magnitude so you'll have the same vm for positive amplitude so can you tell me how will the transfer characteristic look for this what would be the transfer characteristics for this condition when both diodes are reversed input is positive this side right plus vi output tends to be negative so it will come in the fourth quadrant exactly opposite what you got here you got the transfer characteristic straight line with slope 1 in the second quadrant for this circuit it will be in the fourth quadrant when both diodes are reversed so as soon as you see this you should be able to analyze is this clear for you if you have any doubts please ask so normally in a practical circuit we'll use one additional diode to prevent what to prevent the output to take a long time uh, varying between minus vsat to uh, plus uh, 0.6 or something like that so if i want to have a smaller voltage change the transition at the output voa will happen faster that's the main reason why we use this diode d1 is that clear so even without d1 it still works if you use a single diode also like how we saw in this first circuit it still works only reason is the time taken is longer okay so this is about the various half wave precision rectifiers and um, the advantages of half wave precision rectifiers over a simple diode rectifier would be no diode drop between the input and output that means if the input is 100 milli volts the output peak will also be 100 milli i'll not uh, get it as vm minus 0.6 the diode drop will lessen the output in a normal rectifier it won't happen like that in the precision rectifier 
i already told you that and its ability to rectify very small voltages is another advantage amplification is also possible if i consider this circuit here i have taken rf equal to r1 because i didn't want any amplification but if i want a gain of 5 or something i can make rf 5 times r1 it still works so whenever uh, the input is in its negative half cycle i'll get the output to be 5 times the input value you can amplify as well as rectify even that advantage we have in this circuit in the practical circuit and uh, it has a low output impedance which is a great advantage we know any circuit should have high input impedance and low output impedance in the first circuit uh, where i have given input to the non inverting terminal the input impedance will also be high remember we already derived in module 4 for a non inverting amplifier it has a very high input impedance and low output impedance so that condition is satisfied in this precision rectifier but coming to this one since we are using an inverting amplifier here the input resistance will be equal to r1 it won't be very high anyway output impedance will still be low this is uh, another circuit uh, a variant of the first circuit i told you you if you want the output to rectify in the negative half cycles the output should follow the input you just had to change the diode here we had connected the diode in this direction here we have changed it in the opposite so this is the waveform you are getting and um, what would be the the transfer characteristics for this negative input negative output so which quadrant you will get quickly you should tell me when input is positive when vi is positive no output vi is positive then no output when vi is negative i am getting negative output which means which quadrant negative vi is here negative v not is here so you will be getting it in the third quadrant negative input negative output this is the transfer characteristics for this circuit you should be able to draw the circuit when you are given transfer characteristics also that would be a, a great um, advantage especially in the lab if you are given transfer characteristics you should be able to draw the circuit and do it okay i hope you followed all these things now let's move on to a full wave precision rectifier so since i am not interested only in rectifying the uh, half signals say i want a circuit which would convert any input signal a sinusoidal input to a full rectified output we know how a full rectified both positive and negative half cycles should be converted to one side say i want both of them to be converted to the positive side then this is possible using a full wave precision rectifier this is your vi and v not for a full wave uh, actually full wave is uh, not for theory not in theory syllabus but is there in the lab all of you would have already done it in the lab yes or no you would have done the simulation of precision rectifier in the lab it is there for simulation in the lab not uh, for um, discrete uh, connections but for simulation so we have to understand the working of a full wave precision rectifier before we move on so let me show you the circuit of a simple full wave precision rectifier here uh, this will be helpful in understanding the behavior see the vi is connected at this point i am using all equal resistors because i don't want any gain in this circuit i just want full wave rectification uh, but it is possible for us to do so many variants i can have uh, 
a different gain for one half cycle i can have a different gain for another half cycle all that i'll tell you in the end just the variance but we need to understand how we can get full wave rectification for that i need to use two op amps as you can see we are using two op amps and you can see how we have connected diodes d1 and d2 this is a simple case where uh, we have connected two diodes d1 and d2 as shown and we have resistors like this so if you observe the second part is just a what it's a difference amplifier so this is a difference amplifier it will act like inverting amplifier in uh, some case and uh, the first part we know is similar to that of a half wave precision rectifier it will generate the output of a half wave precision rectifier so in effect you will see this full wave precision rectifier is a combination of half wave precision rectifier followed with a difference amplifier now let's try to analyze the working of this circuit let me consider the input voltage connected here you have the signal generator connected at this point so during positive half cycle of the input that is when input is increasing it is positive and it is increasing so you have the input increasing like this what would happen here i would have a positive voltage at the inverting terminal of op amp a1 therefore since there is a positive at the inverting terminal the output here voa tends to go towards minus vsat uh, because initially we have all the diodes are open circuited so none of the feedback loops are closed so output will tend to go towards minus vsat then uh, diode d1 will be conducting because its cathode is connected to a negative voltage and anode to a positive voltage whereas diode d2 will be off this will not conduct because the anode of d2 is connected to the negative voltage so you can say d1 is on and d2 is off so what would happen to the final output the output voltage here in this case this loop the upper loop will be closed you can see the equivalent circuit can be written as shown the upper loop is closed because d1 is on and from here r and another r and the lower feedback loop is not closed because this is off so i'll not have any connection from this part so i can say even uh, this part connected here is almost like connected to ground therefore what would happen v not would be equal to or let's say voa would be equal to minus vi it's an inverter here vi is given here plus vi is given so after an inverting configuration i'll get voa as minus vi and then this minus vi is again passed through another inverter therefore the final output v not is equal to minus of minus vi which is plus vi so you will get a positive uh, output voltage which will follow the input during positive half cycle of the input signal similar to that we can see quickly what will happen when we are in the negative half cycle when vi is in the negative half cycle less than 0 you see the second diode should switch on naturally you can understand if there is a negative voltage here whenever there is a negative voltage here this voa tends towards plus vsat when it tends towards plus vsat this is positive so diode d2 is on and this will be off when d2 is on 
what would happen to the equivalent circuit and when d1 is how off how will it look see d2 is on means this connection is there d1 is off this connection is removed okay and you have this resistance here you have this r in series with this r because this connection is not there now these two resistors are in series and it's equal to a value 2r as you can see here 2r the input is there vi at this point to the resistance r and this part is there as usual so this would be the equivalent circuit of the op amp now if i consider node a and if i apply kcl at node a in this circuit if i apply kcl at node a remember since this is actual ground the non inverting terminal this will be at virtual ground at zero potential so the current through this resistor r will be vi divided by r okay the current through this first resistor is vi by r it will be entering this node and the current through this resistor will be if i consider this voltage as v it will be v minus 0 the voltage here is 0 remember because it is virtual ground so the current through this resistor will be v minus 0 by 2r or v by 2r in this direction it is also entering and what is the current in this the third value the third branch here is this resistor the voltage here is also v if this voltage is at v because of the principle of virtual short this should also be at v it is understood so v minus 0 by r again which will be v by r i hope you are following this there are three currents and all currents are entering this node a one is the input current vi by r because this voltage is at zero potential as it is the virtual ground the actual ground is the non inverting terminal this is virtual ground so you will observe you will be able to reduce the equation using this and you will get the value of v here as minus 2 by 3 vi and if i just proceed uh, to the final equivalent circuit this stage the second stage with 2r here and since this is ground virtual ground i'll connect it to ground to ground here r is here and the voltage v is input to the non inverting terminal this v value is minus 2 by 3 vi so this circuit now behaves like a non inverting amplifier whose output voltage is 1 plus rf by ri or r r by 2r as you can see this is rf and this is r1 so rf by r1 becomes 1 plus r by 2r which is the gain of the non inverting amplifier into the input voltage minus 2 by 3 vi if you simplify this you will get the output still equals to vi so have we achieved the required condition when the input was in its positive half cycle we showed output follows the input or v not will be plus vi and when input is in negative half cycle also we are able to show output will be equal to vi only so i am able to get the full wave rectification in this circuit okay so this is a simple full wave rectifier and if you try to draw the transfer characteristics it would look like this for positive vi also i am going to get positive output for negative vi also i am going to get positive output so i will have two uh, straight lines with slope 1 here if you the slope represents the gain if i want a different slope then i should use different resistors here and i should be able to change the gain as simple as that so if i want a, a value like this say if i want this gain to be 5 this gain to be just 3 something like that you can get such variables by changing resistors in the circuit anyway let's not go about this design because as i told you this is needed only for your lab 
and i think if you do this full wave precision rectifier with uh, gain 1 it would be sufficient we consider all resistors to be equal okay and if time permits in the end i'll give uh, this design in the notes if you are interested you can read through the notes where we can design for different slopes and that means the output will be something like this positive half cycle i'll have gain as 5 negative half cycle i'll have gain as 3 so you can get such variable voltages you can play with the circuit well so this is about the full wave precision rectifier i think with this we'll stop uh, today's class